we doing here, girlfriend? It looks like you're getting your sections already. Yeah, so what we're going to do today is we're going to do a piggyback perm on um, T in here. So um, we're going to start at the front and we're going to wind back. So that's I'm, I'm taking the section this way from the front all the way back down to the nape. Okay. So I'll show you that in a second. I'll spin her around and show you that. So um, Tegan's hair. What's the length of the hair? It looks like long yeah, hair. Yeah, she's got long hair and it's very thick and it's heavy. I mean, she's got a lot of hair, so it's very heavy. So we're going to use some tighter rods to make sure that we, you know, don't pull out all that um, curl, right? Because the weight of the hair will pull the curl out. So... So I'm just uh, making a nice clean suction, which is very important. Yeah, nice clean suctions are important. Don't lose your. Uh... So here's a here's just a look at the suction. Okay. From the front to the back, so all the way down to yep, the nape. Right down. So to how the many nape. sections are those? Three. That's three sections. Uh, yeah, it's three sections. Yeah. Okay. The awesome. sides will kind of be um, cut into two sections themselves, but yeah, you got like three sections here. So we're going to start at the front here. Okay. And uh, you got to make sure that you're right over top of the base. Okay. So you cannot overextend in any way. It's got to be directly over top of the base. Okay. Awesome. So here we go. Section number one. So you're going to start a little less than halfway down because you have to remember that you're winding from both directions you're winding down and you're winding the hair that's that's out of the rod around the rod at the same time so you start a little less than half is it secure are you making it very tight or what are you doing there well you do you have to make it tight because you're uh, piling rods on top of each other so uh, it has to be nice and tight you need especially a nice tight base so you use your end paper to secure your ends and now you're going to roll the um, the other rod on top and they they can flop around that's why they need to be really tight and secure and so they flop a bit like that one did but what i'm going to do is i'm going to put picks in there and the picks are going to keep it secure so you know don't worry about that for right now unless they're in your way in your way then you can just apply the picks as you need to but that okay. one's not that one's not really in my way right now so so now we're uh, okay so right now that's the one full um wind of a piggyback perm that is okay so small at the roots now how are you winding that i can see halfway down uh, a little less than half because you need enough um, of the hair sticking out to make sure that you get enough revolution so that you're going to get a nice curl in the ends as well. So you need you need to have enough length so that you can get another perm rod in there. And I'm doing a little bit tighter at the root because as I said, the length and weight of her hair will pull it out. So we want it to be a little bit tighter at the root. Okay, nice and secure nice and secure but you know the difference between these two rods when um, you take the perm rods out and whatever it's absolutely negligible you would there's no line of demarcation you're not going to see where the purple started and the the white ended so don't even worry about that they're very close in diameter so nice good tension there are you uh, got a good grip on the hair yeah, I mean, you want it to be nice and firm. And you have to remember, too, as you're winding those free pieces onto the rod, it has to be flat. It cannot be bunched up in any way. It can't be kind of like roped. It has to be very flat. So you can just see it as I'm doing it. It has to be nice and flat, just as I've and then combed you that out. out that very gum. smooth, yeah. yeah. So no coils are bunched up no, or rope nice yeah. and smooth. <clears throat> Has to be nice and smooth. Right to the tip. See how the paper is covering the very tips of the hair? Yeah. No you, fish hooks. You always pull the the um, paper a little bit past the end so that you have all the ends in there and nothing is going to pop out at any point of the sun. Um, nice and secure. With the saturation and the rinsing, nothing. It, it's all nice and secure in there. Awesome. Nice. So as we continue on with our wrap here, um, I will just tell you that my sections are about a half an inch wide. 
So I don't want to go any thicker than that because we want Tegan to have some really, really nice, tight, you know, firm curls. And uh, maybe Abby, you can explain, um, you know, why we're doing this perm on Tegan now. Well, as you guys know, Tegan had a perm back in the um, early summer and um, she loved the curls so much. And it was a beach wave perm done with the sponge rollers. Um, it was a temporary perm because we weren't sure she would like the perm. And she loved the curls so much that she wanted to go full on into full blown curls and lots of it. So we decided that we would do the, the piggyback perm and here we are. Yep, we are definitely going to give her some really nice, awesome curl now. The Beach Wave Perm is a, is a very loose, you know, waves, but this is going to be nice and firm and tight and bouncy and lots of volume. And so, I mean, uh, her Beach Wave Perm was essentially like a little starter perm for her. Just get her feet wet with a little bit of wave and now she absolutely loved it and just wants to go further. Okay, so we're just going to fast forward here as you watch the winding process for this section that we're doing. Here we go. So we're at the crown, right, Paulina? We're at the crown. Yeah, we're at the crown. So we just spun uh, Tegan around so that you can get a little side view and see what's going on from this angle. So we're going from now all the way down to the nape, going straight back, right? Yep, all the way down. All right, here we go. Let's continue with the same winding pattern. So just a few notes, again, make sure that your sections are wound right over top of the base and that you keep the hair smooth and flat with no bunching. Also, just keep in mind when you're winding this perm that, you know, your sections need to be really, really clean and you have to make sure that they are the same with every single section, the same width, the same length because that just ensures that you're gonna get really good even curl and you know, you, you're know you not gonna get lost and you're gonna keep the same pattern and the same flow throughout the entire perm. That's very important for, for a really nice finished look. Make sure that you keep lots of moisture in the hair while you're winding. You have to moisten the perm rods that you've already wound as well as the stuff that you are going to wind. So are you winding that pretty tight, Paulina? Yeah, it has to be wound tight, you know, to keep the rods in place because you're winding, you know, on top of each other, winding rods on top, on top. But your sections still have to be thin because your hair is thick. And, you know, if the sections are too thick, then you're going to get too much bulk and you won't get saturation when you're applying your, your perm solution. You need to get saturation all the way from the root to the ends. Interesting. So what would you say the porosity of her hair is? So Tegan, uh, she would, I would say she's like a normal mid-range porosity. Even though we did do a perm on her before, she's never had colored hair or anything. So I would say she's just a pretty normal, not, not, uh, not too porous at all, actually. So as I'm winding this rod, I'm just going to show you, as I said, they fall on top of each other. So here's a good spot where you would get a pick 
Um, they're just falling on top of each other at this point. So you just get the pick and you throw it in just well enough so that it'll keep it out of your way. And then later on we can put it through the elastics. But right now you just want to keep it out of your way so you can continue on with your wrap. Interesting, but it also it, it like alleviates the, the pressure from the elastic on the hair, right? Yes, absolutely. So sometimes when the elastic is wound really, really tight, which we are doing with this perm because we need to, you know, have it tight to keep all these rods in, um, it can leave like a funky line, right? After you put your perm solution on, the elastic's too tight and then it leaves this line. So I will be applying the picks through the elastics to keep the elastic off the hair and I will do that after. So now with the bottom ones though, um, you can't really get a pick through there. So you just kind of go back after they're anchored with the picks in the purple perm rods and then you can just loosen the bands off of the hair a little bit. So, but for now you just need to wind it really tight. Yeah, cause you'll want to keep it nice and secure. Exactly. So at the very end of the whole wrap, you're going to go back in and uh, maneuver some of those um, elastics a little bit looser. The picks will go on the purple ones on top and then I'll just loosen the um, elastic off of the white one. But the, at that point, once the picks are in the purple ones, the perm rods are very, very secure. So you can go in back after and just loosen the yeah. elastics off of the white ones. You can't get picks in there also because they're it's on too the much. bottom. They're it's too much. Bottom. And yeah. it's just too much um, friction on the hair have picks on the purple one and then picks on the white one. Yeah, so. you're gonna disturb your wrap if you go go in and start screwing around with everything. Okay, so Paulina is continuing all the way down to the nape. And I'm just going to note here that when you're when you're smoothing out this um, section of the hair to be wound, you got to make sure that you're not pulling off the the white rod off of its base. So you got to be a little gentle. It's a little tricky, and you can kind of put your fingers there as an anchor uh, when you're winding it at the top there. So just be careful that you're not pulling it too far off of its base. But you have to have that piece nice and flat it's bulky or lumpy or bumpy you're absolutely not going to get even and full saturation after you know when you're applying your perm solution so it absolutely has to be flat and smooth So as I'm approaching the nape here, uh, sometimes what I will do, because her hair is long and I'll make this decision when I get there, I won't piggyback the last two sections um, because, because her hair is long, but it's, it's a certain length from the nape to the ends and a length from the top to the ends, you know, the nape to the ends is a lot shorter. So. You only require one perm rod. Two perm rods just won't give you enough curl. So, you know, I will make that determination as I get to the bottom too. And, you know, that's what you do as a stylist. You, you know, use your creative judgment and do what you think is right. Nice, um, nice sections, nice and clean, organized, really, really important when you're doing a perm, any perm, but especially a perm like this. Uh, when I had my salon and I would teach my girls how to do a perm, um, I made sure that they would uh, organize those sections, you know, and uh, keep the rolls going evenly down so you don't get lost. It's just something that I like to teach my girls. What do you think, Paulina? 
Yeah, I mean, it just makes things so much easier when you're winding, when you're, everything is straight, and you have to make sure that your sections are always the same width when you're carving them out too. Very, very important, because you want your perm to be very uniform. Um, if you're, you know, you get lost in your perm, you take a different size sections, it's not going to turn out well. So, I mean, especially with this kind of perm, you need to have really clean, very, very definite sections. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Beautiful wraps coming down. We're almost at the, the last part of section number one. Is that the last row? Yeah, so this is it. So I decided that I am going to use just a purple rod on the bottom here because um, it's not that long. So it's not as long as the top pieces. So I'm just going to use this one. Absolutely make sure that you hydrate all the way through all the time. It's very important. So um, I, I just sprayed my last section and I'm going to spray the rest um, when I'm done this. And uh, yeah, here we go. And here's a little bit of broken hair. So when yeah. you're winding, you got to make sure that you get those pieces in because we all have shorter pieces, broken hair around the hairline everywhere. So make sure that you get it all in there. Everything's got to be in there. There you go. Don't leave them out hanging because if you leave them out, they're not going to get perm. Beautiful. Section number one. That's your first section, people. So Absolutely. We're going to move on. So, um, when are we going to put the picks in? What do you think? Are we putting them in now? Uh, or? Yeah, no, I'm going to put them in later. I'm going to put them in after. They're fine. They're, they're good for now. So, I'm going to put them in after. But, it's very important. As you go along, you have to keep spraying it. Because, you know, the outside, the hair that you see might be damp. But what's already wound around the rod a few times is probably dried out. So always, all through your wrap, you have to keep hydrating it. Make sure that it doesn't dry out. You're not going to get good saturation uh, with your perm solution if you um, if your hair is all dry on the inside of that perm rod. So hydrate, 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 people, all the time. Can't say enough of how much uh, you got to keep your perm hydrated. Very, very important. So uh, now we're on to the second section. Where are you going to start? So I'm going to start on this side over here, and you can see it's a little bit crowded. You can just push your rods over a little bit, but I mean, believe me, you have lots of room to work here. And the hair, um, the perm rods are very secure at this point, so don't worry about it. You can just kind of push them over a little bit out of your way. They're good. They're not going to wobble or fall out at all, so they're good to go. All right. Actually, you know what? I'm just going to put the picks in right now so you can see. So, um, and then that'll give us a little added stability. We can pop them over a little bit and get them out of the way. So, I never go more than two perm rods on this one pick. Okay, so you just have to lift those elastics. You gotta get your nails in there, lift them up because um, I wound it very tightly. So, we just wanna make sure that we get the elastics off of the hair so we don't get any funky lines. So, Two, two rods to one uh, pick is good. You put them in, and then as soon as you get them in, it really anchors those perm rods even more, and they stay exactly right in place. And that's kind of why I decided to do it just right now, or just do it to get them out of the way because they were kind of going to the left. So it just gives you a little more room to work. There you so go. It kind of moves it and it holds it in place so you can actually, yeah, looks nice. Yeah, I mean, it's up, it's up to you, you know. Um, you can put them in at the very, very end, or you can put them in section by section. It's completely up to your discretion, however um, you're comfortable, whatever feels best for you. So, But the picks are a very important step, so do not forget those. So also, applying the picks in the hair really helps for when you're rinsing, because they can flop around uh, when you're rinsing them, and these just keep the, the picks just keep them right in place, very, very secure. So, I mean, with this perm, as we'll get into later, I rinse for a very long time. So, um, it's, you know, the, the picks are essential for two reasons. So, to help keep everything stable and to keep the bands off of the hair so you don't get any weird lines. So, or breakage. So, or, or breakage, yeah. yeah. Very important step. Yeah. Okay, let's move along. Right down to the end, you're doing two two at a time. So you're only covering one pick's doing two perm rods. That's it. 
Okay, so section number one is done. Here we go to section number two. Okay, so some people split this section in two. I don't. I just kind of freehand it. So I'll start at the back. So I take the sections the same width every time. And I always, always start at the back. Because if you start at the front, you paint yourself into a corner. So start at the back so you have some room to work. Here we go into section number two. Okay, so now I'm moving on to this section and I always go from back to front. Back Why is to that? Front. Why is that? Because funny, huh? the back section is still open. There's no perm rod in front of it. So you don't want to crowd yourself. So always go from back to front. Work towards your open space. Also make sure when you're winding around the hairline there could be little pieces that are hanging out so you have to make sure you get them all in because if you put perm solution on them and they're just kind of floating around they're going to take the shape of whatever they are so if they're not around the perm rod they can turn out kind of weird or straight for that matter so make sure you get all the little pieces in. So we chose these rods based on the length of her hair and the type of curl we want. It's going to be a firm curl. But you can do tighter curls, you can use pink and grays, or you can use for body wave, orange and beige, and green and black. It depends on what your client wants, but you can mix and match your perm rods with this technique for sure. So you're like, um, it's like fitting in there like a puzzle. So you're going back and forth. Everything is like fitting into place, nice and neat. Yes, exactly. When you're doing your first section from the top to the back, you're open on both ends. There's nothing to inhibit you on either side. When you're doing the sides, it's different because you're having sections right next to each other. So it's a little bit different. So as I said before, you always start at the back and then work towards your open end. And always make sure that you keep it nice and hydrated as you're going along. Very, very important. Hey, Paulina, it looks like you're double winding that white rod. No, you're absolutely right. So I'm winding it like a regular perm rod, but I'm also winding the stuff that's still hanging out. I'm winding that at the same time. And that's why it's important to start less than halfway down. So you can wind from both ends of the rod. Because we want this to be a tight curl, we need to wind it around the rod several times. And the purple rod, we need lots of room so we can get a revolutions for sure if you're doing a body perm you're going to try to get like two three four revolutions around the rod but for a tight curl we want to go round and round so i'm just going to put these picks in right now just to keep that from flopping down in my way as i'm trying to wind this I haven't placed them to keep the elastic off. I'm just putting them there to keep them out of my way, but I will go back and, and place them properly. So Paulina, a lot of reviewers have asked if there's gonna be a line of demarcation because of the two different perm uh, rods. No, absolutely not. These sizes are so close. Uh, they're a little bit different, but they're so close. And you know, uh, we want a little bit more at the root and that's going to give us that but it's going to be very negligible 
So I chose to use the jumbo end papers. So it just helps to keep all the ends in. So, you know, you want to make sure you get all the ends in so you don't get any fish hooks or anything popping out or whatever. Uh, Tegan hasn't had her hair cut in a while, so her hair is basically all one length. However, when you have layers in the hair, the, uh, the jumbo papers are fabulous for that. Okay, this is the last section and actually at the nape I did just one but here I'm going to do two because the section is a little bit longer so I'm going to do two rods of this one. So as a perm specialist I mean this is something that you just learn and you use your own discretion and as I'm winding this, this um, section this is a little bit shorter so I'm actually going to use a white rod instead of a purple here. So it's very important with this perm that you get around the rod. You have to wind the hair around the rod enough time so that you're actually going to get a nice strong curl. And that's just very important with this type of perm because we want it to be a nice, tight, firm curl. So, you know, you got to get around that rod at least four times and more to make sure that you're going to get a nice, firm curl. Okay, so um, as you can see, Paulina is uh, rehydrating her perm. Um, all the area that she did already, she's making sure that it doesn't dry out. So here now I'm just going to reapply the picks properly. I'm going to put them in um, two perm rods to one pick just to keep the elastics off of the hair to make sure there's no funky lines or breakage. Beautiful. Okay, so I just want to say that um, on the side here, as I'm looking, um, her hair is dried out a little bit. So I'm just going to spray it right here. And as I'm doing that, I'm just looking to make sure that the elastics are not too, too tight on the white rods. If they are, I would, you know, uh, loosen them up. They will get looser in the rinse, but everything looks perfect right now. Okay, so here we go. We're going to move on to the other side. This is the last section here. So make sure that the hair is very, very wet again. You got to start out with a nice moist hair so you got some good control. And here we go. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to do just the exact same thing we did on the other side. Just repeat the same winding technique. Yep, nothing different between the sides. It's all the same. So just, you know, this, this will be our, our moment to just go over some important points, you know, just make sure that you're right over top of the base. Make sure that you start a little less than halfway down the shaft. Make sure that you're getting at least eight winds around the rod. Um, keep your sections really clean. What else, Ups? Yeah, um, pretty much. Good, good control, you know, not pulling too tight, not too hard, right? You. Um, you don't like to keep a firm grip on it, you like to have it a little bit more looser, you said? Yeah, it has to be nice and, and smooth, right? So um, there's no bumps or whatever, but you don't have to, you know, pull her hair out of the root. Just keep a, a firm hold on it and um, keep it smooth, smooth, no bumps, no lumps. And um, actually, this one didn't feel right. I'm going to take this one out and do it again. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, always remember, there's no shame in uh, when you're trying to do a masterpiece. So 
If it doesn't feel right, just take it out and start over again to make it perfect. Yeah, absolutely. Do not leave it if it doesn't feel right or if it doesn't look like it's wound right. Take it out and do it over again so that you make sure your perm is absolutely the best that it can be. piggyback perm is one of those forgotten perms but they are an excellent perm for long thick heavy hair gives an excellent curl yeah sadly this is kind of a lost technique it's such a beautiful perm with really great results and a lot of people just don't know it well this is why we wanted to bring you this instructional video so new stylists or um, anyone that doesn't remember how to do this kind of perm can learn how to do it so a lot of people probably wonder um, how much would you charge for a perm like this? But Polly and I are professionals. I would say, you know, we've been doing perms like this or hairdressers for 35 years. Um, this will probably take us between two and a half hours to three hours, three and a half at the most, uh, depending on the, the, the length of the hair, the thickness, you know. Uh, what do you think, Paulina? Yeah, I would say that's correct. And you know, you have a base rate, so you kind of apply your base rate and then you add, you know, extra for the product that you use. You have to add for that. And this is a very labor intensive process. So, I mean, you charge for that as well. It's not like you apply the color and it sat for an hour and you went away and did another client. You are working on this client 100% yeah. the entire time. So you can absolutely charge for that. They have your undivided attention for the entire time. So, you know, charge accordingly. Yeah, you never ever put another client in between your perm. Any perms, you should book out that time exclusively for that one client. Don't put a haircut in between because anything can change, especially in the in the perming process. So I would say we probably could use anywhere from two to three solutions. What do you think? Yeah, two to three solutions on this one. You know, you'll be able to tell how saturated it is. You have to have it extremely saturated. You'll be able to tell that while you're applying it. So just make sure you have three on hand. Maybe you're only going to use two. But again, that is something that you charge for. So if you do end up opening a third box and you only use half of it, then you throw that away. You never try to save it or salvage it or reuse it because oxygen has gotten to it because it was opened and that's it, it's garbage, it has to go out. So in that case, you would charge your client for three applications. It's funny, you know, because um, a lot of times people always tell me, you know, I had a perm, but it didn't take on the ends. I don't understand why. Um, you know, most of the time, it's because people don't use um, the right amount of perm solution. They cheap out on perm solution and they don't understand that it doesn't go all the way down to the ends, doesn't saturate. But with this perm in particular, we don't have to worry about that. Right, Paulina? Right, exactly. Because we're using two rods to one strand. So you're not winding and winding and winding on one rod and the hair is getting thicker and thicker on that rod. You're using two, so it's spread out. So you're going to get really, really good saturation and that's what's going to give you a nice consistent curl from root to end. Okay, and what do you think this up firm like this price range? What would you charge? Yeah, three fifty to five hundred dollars, depending on time, how many perms used. You know, like I said, it's it's a uh, start to finish. You are with this client one hundred percent, so you charge for your time. Yeah, I think so. Well said. Another thing I wanted to mention when we were uh, younger hairdressers. We didn't have YouTube videos to learn all this stuff from. Uh, we went to courses that were hundreds of dollars and that this is how we learned how to do these type of perms and then trial and error over time. So I think that this video is compact with so much information and I'm really proud of it. Aren't you Paulina? I'm very proud of it and if we can help anyone like get to a good place with this kind of a perm where you're going to make some good money and make your clients really happy, well worth it. Why do they call it a piggyback perm? Because there's two perms? Yeah, exactly that. It's one perm rod on top of the other, so it's piggybacked.
So I'm just going to place this pick in here just to keep it out of my way as I'm finishing up around the hairline here and then I will replace that later. Yeah, I can see that because um, usually around the hairline it's um, a lot thinner. But now you're back to the back because you're staggering back and forth. So you go into the back and then the front. Is that how you're doing your pattern? Yeah. Yeah, I just, uh, you know, whatever feels right as I'm doing it, you know, you just use your own discretion as a stylist. Yeah, because you don't want to, as you said in the beginning, you don't want to closet yourself or... Um, Paint or... yourself into a corner. Yes, I like that terminology. Yeah. Yeah, so around the hairline is always finer. Um, so I would suggest putting a lot of water on that, right, Paulina? Keep that yeah. nice and moist. Yeah, it'll dry out very quickly, so make sure that that's very, very saturated at all times. Yeah, and those little tiny pieces, got to get them all in there. Oh, so we're going to try it again. Okay, here we go. More moisture, always tons of moisture. That seems to help to clump the hair together better so you can position it on the rock. Yeah, and if you don't have every little piece of hair in, when you put the perm solution on, it's going to cement itself in whatever weirdo position it is. It has to be in the rod. Yeah, exactly. So make sure that it's in there, no matter if you have to use another paper, wet it some more, just make sure that it is wound also. Okay, we're almost there. Okay, so for this section here, I'm deciding it's a little short, so I'm going to use uh, two white rods on this one because you have to get at least four revolutions around to get a good curl, a good strong curl. So I'm going to use a white one here. And again, you know, just do what you need to as you're going through to make sure that everything is uniform. And so for this last one here, I'm going to use also two white rods. Okay, here is the last section, last wind to the last section. Here we have it, eh? We're done. Our wind is complete and we're just going to put our picks in. Okay, so just remember, no more than two perm rods to one pick. And again, we're just preserving the client's hair, make sure there's no uh, breakage or no funky lines from the elastics. That's what the picks do. It just alleviates some um, pressure from the, from the elastic on the hair. Yeah, it's a very important step and believe me, it is a step that you absolutely cannot leave out. You absolutely have to do it. So, and don't forget also that these picks uh, provide a little bit of um, anchoring for the perm rods. When you're because, washing it. Yes, when you rinse them, they do tend to flop around and get looser and you just want to uh, preserve the integrity of your wind because you spent a whole lot of time winding this and you don't want them falling out or um, loosening up too much. So. Very important step. Okay, let's do a full spin around. All right, Paulina, so we are at the application part. Okay, so what I always like to do, because perm solution is stinky and it's runny and whatever, so I always take a bag and just tuck it in, especially for when you're rinsing too, just so that they don't get their clothes wet, okay? So, one towel. Underneath, making a nice lip here so that it's almost like a perm solution catcher. Okay, so we apply this towel. Secure.
secure it with a clip. So now what we do is we take a little bit of conditioner. And you're gonna put this all the way around the hairline. This protects the skin a little bit because it is chemicals. That actually helps to anchor your um, cotton batten also. And if anybody has like sensitive skin, also protects. Careful not to get it on the hair because you want to make sure that the firm solution is hitting everything with no barriers. And it serves as a good uh, moisturizer for your hands too. So now we're going to get some cotton batten. tray that Jenny excess actually if there's excess that has if you find that you come to the very end of your bottle and there's a puddle you can squeeze the bottle and then suck it back up that's why we love the firm trays that's why like, I, I always use the firm trays every yeah. one of my friends so always give your client a towel just in case it runs anywhere and I'm gonna have a towel as well and we're going to start at the front. So as you're applying it, you have to make sure that you absolutely saturate every single one. Move your rods around a little bit to make sure that you're getting everything. Very important. We might be using three on her. She has a lot of hair. She does have a lot of hair and there are a lot of rods in here. So side to side, make sure everything don't, and try to keep your fingers on the rod so you don't lose your placement. You may have noticed that I put a smock on because this does spray a little bit, so it can wreck your clothes. Okay. So one one whole solution to just the top part. There's a little bit left in here, so okay. we'll finish her off. Get away with just two then. Yeah, I mean, I think the reason for that would be that, you know, you have two perm rods, so that one long strand is um, broken up into two. So, you know, you can saturate both of those perm rods absolutely thoroughly and completely. So you don't have to worry about, you know, the perm solution getting all the way in after you've wound around one perm rod. So, you know, you really can make this perm solution stretch. So now you've come to the end. If you push the bottle in, you are reusing. Oh, I wasted it. There you go. Take it a little that's bit more. We, that's why we love the frame trays. Waste not, or I would want say not. The net tray. We love the net tray. Okay, so now we're going into firm solution two. And to the other side we go. Make sure you get every single little nook and cranny in here. Yeah. Lift Very up important. Move it around so you can see it. As you know, you miss one, no curl. That is a tragedy. Yes. And I've seen it happen many times. Okay, so we are fully saturated 
Is that the insurance policy right this there? This is the insurance policy. Yeah. It's not gonna hurt. Right. So now, to apply the bag, and we're using a firm alkaline firm on her because we want maximum curl. There's a lot of rods in here, so. So I just put a little nip in the bag at the top and the back here to open it up a bit because it's very bulky. So now we're covered. And we are going to put a towel over top to make sure that all the heat stays in because we need that for the processing. So there we have it. Here's the application. And now we're going to set the timer. And there we go. Okay, so we timed that actually to, just to let you know I put an extra towel on here just to keep the uh, heat in. So we are now going to do a test strand. Let's see how the curl is looking. Okay, that's not done. So again, that you can see. We're gonna give her another five minutes. And then check it again. Okay, so we gave Tegan an extra five minutes, so we are now at 20 minutes. And that looks much better. Let me see. Much better. But you know what? I'm gonna give her two more minutes, just okay, two. Okay, do it again, let me see. Okay, we can see a little bit of a bend, but yes. Two more minutes? Two more minutes. Okay. Okay, so we gave Tegan another two minutes, so we are at 22 minutes now. That looks pretty good. Yeah, it's strong. It's got a nice S bend. And I'm just going to check one of the white ones. Yeah, we're good. Okay, so 22 minutes with a firm alkaline kern. Okay, so now we are going to transfer her to the sink and we are going to rinse and neutralize. Okay, so now we're going to rinse. How's your neck? It's okay. Mm -hmm. Now, since we used a lot of firm solution and there's a ton of rods, we're actually gonna rinse this for quite a while. Very important to get the water all the way down to the very bottom. It's extremely important. If there's any residual perm solution left on the hair, when you put the neutralizer on, it can actually burn because there's a chemical reaction. So you have to be very, very conscious to get all of this perm solution out. So Paulina has been rinsing this perm for almost five minutes now, which is very uh, important. Thorough, very, yeah, very, very thorough. thorough. You always want to make sure you lift um, the client's head with your hands, especially when you move it back. When they have the, all these rods in their hair, their, hair, their, their head is like 20 pounds uh, heavier. Underneath the neck, really important. A lot of people miss the nape. If you miss that, it's going to break off. Or when someone says, you know, why is my perm so dry? Well, the rinsing uh, process is very important. So I always, you know, and Paulina is the same, 
We like to rinse our firm for a long time. Just to make sure, ensure all the firm solution is rinsed out. And usually you use your um, other hand just to kind of feel. Sometimes you can kind of feel there's a little bit of remnants of the firm It feels solution. slimy. Yeah. It feels slippery. So yeah, you absolutely can feel yeah. it. Yeah. So you always want to touch, use your other hand to touch. You can almost feel it. You really can feel it. Okay, I think we're good. Well, the cotton is nice and soaking wet now, so its, it's purpose is finished. So, now we're going to blot it. Try to hit every rod with your fingers. Very, very important to make sure that you get all the moisture out. So this is just part one of the drying process. You might probably use another towel, etc., etc. So I would say that your goal is to get about 50% of the water out of there. So you still want it to be moist, but you want the excess drippy stuff to be out. So these feel really good. That's that's perfect. Now you want to make sure that all your clients' towels are changed. If the cape is messy, change it. Well, the beauty about the piggyback firm is that it's split into two, so it's easier, easier to blot out the excess water. Yeah, with the piggyback, it's, it's much easier because if you had a, a length of hair like this, mm -hmm. and you wound over the hair, over top, over top, over top, it would be hard to get the stuff at the bottom, but because one length of hair is chopped up into two perm rods, much easier. Okay, so now we're doing the prep for applying the neutralizer. So we have to make sure that we apply cotton batten again. Um, again, make sure that your client is extremely comfortable and we don't want any runs. And now we're going to apply our neutralizer. Just tilt your head back a little bit. Neutralizer tends to be a little more runnier. So it spreads easier than the perm solution. Perm solution is a little thicker. And it's definitely runnier, so it can run down your client's face. So it's always good to make sure they're protected. And just same as the perm solution, you gotta make sure you saturate absolutely every little bit of everything. So we're on to bottle number two. Okay, always save a little bit of your neutralizer for the end. Sit comfortably, however. Um, usually uh, a neutralizer is five to seven minutes, somewhere around there. I always leave mine 10, just to really get a good cementing in of, you know, cause this is the finish. This is you rearrange the S bonds and now we want to set them. So I always give it a little bit longer. Okay, so now we're going to take all the firm rods out. Okay, always start at the bottom. Look at that beautiful curl. Lovely. Beautiful. Beautiful curls from roots to end. Nice. 
definitely a lot easier to take the rollers out than to put them in, but still <laughs> time consuming taking them out. Yeah, there's a lot of them, and I am going to count them. Yes, we haven't counted them, we'll get Tegan so. to count them. What? Beautiful pearls. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the remaining neutralizer and I'm going to put it in her hair. Crunch it in. Okay, so here's the deal. The rinse is extremely important, and this is what people don't do enough of. You have to rinse, 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 because the smell of the perm, it stays with the client, and they cannot wash their hair for 48 hours. So rinse, 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 rinse. So as always with any perm, no shampoo for 48 hours. We're going to get um, the hair to, to uh, neutralize and harden back, right? Yep, it needs time to settle and set in. And we're not actually going to put a cream conditioner on her. We're going to uh, rinse out the neutralizer and then we are going to put a spray in conditioner. Okay, everybody, here we are at the very finish, the end of the perm. Paulina, how many perm rods were put into this perm? So, 86 perm rods were put in there. That's a lot. So, a you, lot. Know, you have to charge for the time that it takes you to do this perm. That is a lot of perm rods. But what a beautiful perm. Absolutely. This has turned out to be. 